It's me, Undead Viking. I'm here to talk to you about a game that I have really enjoyed the heck out of. It is called Valeria Card Kingdoms. This is, well, obviously, probably, as you would guess, a card game, uh, but it involves the use of dice and resource allocation and building a tableau in front of you. All the things that I really enjoy with games. I like the idea of building something up. I like uh, being able to see something being created. I like, you know, collecting resources and using those things, and I really, really like using dice. And um, there's a lot of things that this game feels like, um, and uh, some of them will be very apparent, and I'll touch on that when we do the conclusion. Uh, but, you know, I'm not going to spend a lot of time going on. As you can tell, I am sick, and I haven't uh, felt well for a while, but I know the Kickstarter is starting very, very soon, if not already, and I wanted to make sure that I told you all about this really, really fun game. So, uh, let me show you how to play uh, Valeria, and then we'll come back here and uh, I'll tell you more uh, about why I enjoy this. All right, cool, let's do this. All right, this is what a game would look like after you set up uh, Valeria Card Kingdoms. Um, you'll notice that there are these four rows of cards, and this is the tableau that you'll be purchasing cards from. I've gone ahead and set up the start. Two starting cards of each player is going to be both a peasant and a knight, and uh, you will then, uh, on your turn, what you're going to do is you're going to roll two dice. Now, you start off uh, with two gold and one magic. Uh, gold is pretty simple. Gold is money, and you use it to spend. Magic is a uh, like kind of a catch-all generic wild, if you will, and it can be used as a replacement for gold, or once you start getting these strength tokens, it can be as a replacement for strength, but it can't be anything by itself. It has to add to something. So if I was going to buy something, I couldn't spend like uh, three blue tokens and say I've got three gold. I need a gold and then the three blue tokens or what have you to add to it. So I went ahead and set this up uh, fairly randomly. Um, and by that I mean that each one of these numbers, one, two, three, four, so on and so forth, there are multiple different cards. So like here's the cleric instead of the monk that's over there. Uh, here is the butcher instead of the merchant. And I just picked one at random of each one. Uh, well, i got to be completely honest. Um, I made sure I picked uh, the mercenary since he looks all Viking-y, if you will. But uh, so, you know, it, the game can uh, be like kind of just tailored to how you want to be playing it or uh, you can uh, you know, randomly do it or you know build it in a certain way and, and also, obviously this kind of like opens itself up to having a lot of different expansions or, or possibilities of new cards. Now uh, the top are the monsters that you're going to be able to fight and defeat on your turns and down here are the domains basically the places that you can build and both of these you're going to notice have these little purple tokens on there, and those are like uh, victory points that you get. Uh, one for killing the monster, you get those victory points, and for building the domain, you get those. And that happens at the end of the game, obviously. Uh, so, the um, at the beginning of the game, you will get two Duke cards. And these, obviously, Duke name six, this probably, as I, this is a prototype, so they will undoubtedly have names down here, but each Duke card will have a uh, victory point uh, agenda, if you will. So in this case, with this Duke, um, for every uh, citizen that has this symbol, like a worker symbol, you're going to get one victory point. And for this, like a military symbol, this little helmet, uh, you'll get one. And so you'll take that times that, plus that times that. Those are bonus points. And so you get two of these uh, to begin the game. And then you pick one at random, and then you put it face down in front of you. So you kind of hide that from the other people so they don't know. And so, like, let's just say I got this one, uh, one victory point uh, for each uh, soldier, and two victory points for each, like, shadow, like, rogue or whatever. So we're going to take that, we're just going to put a face down, nobody knows what that is, and at the end of the game we reveal and see any extra bonus points that we have. So, on your turn, you're going to roll two dice, and you just, you know, go ahead, and I'm just going to roll these quick, and so we have a one and a, a six. Now what happens with that is, if, not up here, but down here, the things that you own, and you start off with the peasant and the knight, as I said, you get to activate anything with a 1, anything with a 6, and if you have a 7. And so obviously, I don't, I don't have a 1, I don't have a 6, I don't have a 7, but I have a 6, and so I get to activate my knight. Now if I had rolled something, um, let's see, like, 
like one and a two, like that. So I'd have three. You don't get anything. As compensation, you get to take one token, one strength, one magic, or one gold. You just just take that if you so desire. And uh, that's just as compensation for not um, having successfully rolled what you have. Uh, so what you'll do is then you'll activate the card. So in this case I had a 1 and a 6, and if you look down here, uh, I get one strength token uh, for the knight. So I just go ahead, and I'll take a strength token, and I'll add it to my, my little bank here. And then you'll notice that this little symbol over here uh, says, now everybody else, that's what means everybody else is playing, can spend one gold to get a strength token. So they, they, they get to follow suit if they have a knight and, and, and you know, under you know in front of them. And um, in this case obviously everybody's going to have a knight because they're going to be able to activate it and then if they want to do that they can do that as an option. Now after you're done with that part of the game you will go through your harvest action. Now uh, with um, Oh, sorry, not your harvest action, your action phase. So now you're going to, that was the harvest action prior. But the action phase is, now you get to take two actions. Now, um, and you can double up on the actions if you want to. You can do the same thing twice, or you can do separate things, it doesn't matter. So if you're the first player, now everybody else has to wait and watch what you do. You can choose to gain one of these tokens, that's an action. So you could take, if you wanted, you could take one strength and one gold. Uh, you could take two gold, and that would be your two actions, like so. And then, another action you can do is you can slay a monster if you have enough strength uh, to defeat it. Like, I just got the strength token, and you'll notice this goblin here uh, has a strength of one right there, and I can defeat him. And if I defeat him, he's going to be worth one victory point at the end of the game. And I gain a gold for defeating him. So if I did that, that'd be an action. And I, I'd go ahead and, and, and spend that, take it, put him down here to show that I, I've claimed him as a trophy, and then, you know, that would be one, one action. I remember I got to make take my one gold. So I can take that one gold. And there's another action you can do is you can buy another citizen. Now you can add more actions to what you have available. So I've got three gold, but I can increase it by one with the magic to four. So remember, I get extra points if I have guys that are either got these little, uh, the shadow, uh, the, the, uh, the key. So there's like a thief and there is a mercenary out there, and, or, um, you know, I also get bonus points for having uh, the, the, the helms. So, um, looking this over, you know, like I said, I do like the Viking guy, so I can go and I'm gonna spend, now this, this cost for it is three right there, so I spend three coins, and, and then the plus means that the next mercenary I buy, it's plus one more. So if I bought another mercenary, it would, be, it would cost me four, but this one cost me three. And so what I'll do is I'll go ahead and I'll put him over there because he's before the five and the six, and I will spend my three coins. And I could spend two coins and a and a magic, but I, mean, I like the fact that it's wild. There's no reason really to do that. I spend the three coins, and that's my two actions. Now the other action that you can do is buying a domain. And buying a domain is just like, you know, buying something else, like as far as uh, another card, if you will. It does cost the gold that's listed there. And they're worth victory points. And they have a power here. At the start of your action phase, uh, you gain one strength. You just gain one. But in order to get it, you before you can qualify to spend the money on it, you have to have at least three uh, citizens within your tableau that have this symbol. So I need three people that have that helm before I can get it. So, you know, obviously these are ways to get lots of victory points and extra powers, and, and it's, it's, you know, powerful and, and, and good to do. I mean, some of these, like, like the castle, um, costs a lot, you need a lot of people, but during your roll phase, you may roll uh, one at plus one or minus one. So you can actually adjust the die, die results that you actually roll before the game. So obviously getting a hold of these domains is, one, uh, powerful because of the fact that they're worth points, but also powerful because they're going to give you uh, permanent powers that you're going to have for the rest of the game. So that's how the game progresses. So you, you buy it, the next person goes, they do their thing, they go, do, you know, every time that yours get activated, make sure you activate the ones that you have, uh, go around, and keep playing. Uh, whenever you clean out a spot, like let's say all the wizards get purchased, you'll take one of these exhausted cards and put it right there just so you have a placeholder there. That's important because once a certain number of exhausted areas uh, come come forward, uh, then the game is triggered to the end. If you get rid of 
all of the monsters, all the monsters are killed, uh, then the game ends. If you get rid of all the domains, uh, then the game ends. And if you get rid of eight of these, then the game ends as well. As soon as the game is over, uh, you total up the victory points, uh, you total up the points that you got for the monsters, total up the points that you got for your domains, and then you flip over your secret agenda, total up those points, and obviously, whoever has the most points will win the game at that point. So, there you go. Uh, it, it doesn't take a long time to learn. It doesn't take a long time to teach. Uh, and it is you know, a very, very fast, very quick game. Uh, that I, and Well, I'll, I'll go in more into why I like it here uh, in, in, in my conclusion. Oh, I don't even have the strength to do my box flip. I am... I am, uh, I am, I am, I am one, one sick dog of a dude right now. But, um, alright, so cool. Thank you for watching that and, and learning how to play, uh, Valeria Card Kingdoms. Um, I've had, I mentioned, uh, in, in the, the, the showing you how to play thing that, like, you can definitely, like, alter up the different cards you use. And, I mean, I really like that. I like that about any game that, um has uh, uh, the variable card powers because I'm always you know I'm always seriously seriously impressed uh, when a game is balanced when there's like all these different options and all these different things that that have certain effects and powers because I don't think I could ever um, successfully design a game like that and I know a lot of time and effort goes into creating that to make sure that the balance uh, stays um, well within balance <laughs> so um, for that I mean I just appreciate uh, the time and effort that goes into uh, designing a game like this now there's so much about it I mean flat out obviously uh, the poker chips are probably gonna be uh, replaced with uh, you know real like like wooden tokens or something I don't know I haven't I haven't seen exactly but I can only assume better but I mean I love the card art I love the different uh, I love the iconography the fact that it is uh, nearly uh, language independent and uh, there, there's just there's so much I like the fantasy theme you know and, and I've said this many times if you uh, give me a game with a fantasy theme uh, I, I'm probably going to dig it in, in, in some way or shape or form you'd have to really try hard uh, to make a fantasy based game for me not to enjoy now Obviously, um, there's going to be some comparisons to other games that are out there, like Machi Koro. Um, you know, it had, definitely has that whole rolling dice and, and activating other people's cards type of thing. Um, it has, uh, you know, like, it, it, it kind of, in a weird way, I mean, just basically because of the monsters and, and defeating them and stuff, felt like Thunderstone a little bit to me, which is not a bad thing. A game that I've always enjoyed is Thunderstone. And, um, you know, and of course, dice and activating different locations, so I, I couldn't help but feel like, you know, there's a little bit of Kingsburg going on as well, and a, a game that I, you know, I, I absolutely uh, love, and, and will, will always love. Um, so, you know, for all those reasons, I mean, you can say whatever that, the, you know, certain mechanisms or whatever are, are being borrowed and used or whatever, but, you know, um, and, and I know I, I've talked about how, like, it's, it's pretty rare that somebody comes out with, um, like, a brand new mechanism, you know, or, or anything like that, but... The really nice thing about this is that, you know, for me, um, Machi Kuro wasn't a bad game, but this kind of took the idea of Machi Kuro and, and, and turned it into an actual game for me. I actually felt like I was making real choices when I was, when I was choosing what I wanted to do and, like, purchasing the different cards that I wanted. And I didn't feel, I mean, that, the other game felt more like, just like, a, um, a pastime, if you will, that, that I, I was sitting on a table and engaging in. But this one actually has abilities to actually strengthen yourself, to, you know, spin things on their head, and also there's, like, lots of different abilities that actually affect the other people at the table. And so I can actually, once again, as I've said many times, I can actually go into somebody else's garden and I can trash on their flowers, you know, and I can actually, you know, physically affect how well they're doing in the game and, 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 and make it worse for them. And so... This wasn't, uh, for me, just a game of, you know, simply rolling the dice and collecting my things. It, it was it was a game of interaction. It was it was, it was a game of, uh, you know, resource building and, 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 like, building yourself up. But also, like, you know, trying to make sure that, like, you have... I, I love the whole process of making sure you have, like, your bases covered with the cards. And, and but there's also that wonderful decision where it's like, well, do I, you know, purchase something where... Like, you know, like a card that really doesn't help me as far as, like, my end goal with that, like, secret agenda, just so I can activate it if somebody happens to roll that number. And, and then you, but, you know, well, maybe, but, I mean, then, like, you've, but 
then you're you're kind of shortening your stick at the very end when you're like those extra points because you can build the the best engine in the world and and you can sit there and have oh you rolled that okay great i get this you rolled that okay great i get this but unless you're collecting points in some way you're you're not going to win the game and so this game presented itself with a lot of really cool decisions and really um awesome moments for me and you know it is on the lighter side as far as like the strategy goes and and like as far as like my um uh, my scale, if you will, as far as uh, the difficulty level, but it does have a lot of meat on the bone for for kind of a you know I hate the term super filler, uh, but this is what that game feels like, and I've I've actually found myself really enjoying uh, that genre. Now I know I'm a big believer in the big long game. I, I I like I like games that take me two hours or so, but like it or not. The, the industry is kind of going towards these shorter games, and it is getting tougher and tougher for me to actually get those big, long games, unless I'm at a convention or if I've really, like, planned out a weekend uh, moment for me to be able to do that. So, if I'm going to have to play a game that's going to last me 45 minutes, you know, maybe an hour, and this game probably is around right that 45-minute area, then, then I'm glad I have games like this because I'm going to have a heck of a lot of fun while I play it. So, there you go. Uh, that was Valeria Card Kingdoms. If you have any questions about the game, I'd love to answer those. Um, I greatly appreciate you taking the time uh, to watch this video, as I always do. And, as I always say, until the next time you watch one of my videos, I'm wishing you to have yourself one heck of an awesome day. Alright, bye bye now.